I think you guys would have a little bit more of a leg up on that for Fredericksburg. We'll give you that. Okay, so we're a plus one right now. That's right. Ding, ding. <laughs> gonna, they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to make us up like with like little, you know. <laughs> not that we're competitive or anything. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Hey everyone, it's Erin Melton and welcome back to another episode of Living in Richmond, Virginia. I am super excited about who we have to spotlight for us today. It is my wonderful friend and great fellow realtor, Amy Cherry Taylor. Amy, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And if anyone is watching this and you're thinking about moving or selling anything in the Fredericksburg, uh, Virginia area, you better call Amy because she is absolutely terrific. Her and her team have taken care of many of my family members um, and everyone that I've always referred to her and her team over the years have been just wowed by them. They're absolutely terrific. Oh, thank you so much for saying that. And I can say exactly the same thing. We've had such a wonderful partnership for quite some time. And everybody that I have that ever goes that direction, she's the absolute only person that we call. So um, it definitely works both ways. There you go. We, we will stick together even longer <laughs> and have wonderful memories together and for other relationships. All right. So let's get started. We're going to kind of be doing the old Richmond versus Fredericksburg, uh, <laughs> Virginia today so that people can get a really good idea of uh, which one's better. Richmond, just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> girl, <laughs> don't you start with me. You know, I'm just going to say, well, started nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> Amy, just kind of ballpark about how far would you say that you are from an amusement park in Fredericksburg? Um, I would say probably about 35, 40 minutes if you hit Kings Dominion just south of us. So easy peasy drive down there. And that's one of our area's go-tos for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And kind of the same for us, I would say. Um, yeah, I was going to ask that. It's almost like that perfect middle between both of us. We are, yep, yeah, Kings me about the same distance for us as well. And then we probably from Richmond kind of in the other direction, more like right at an hour would be more the Bush Gardens yes. um, and Water Country sort of thing. Yeah. And we all still head down there too. It's just a exactly. little bit further. Exactly. Because <laughs> it's just easy trips up and down 64 and 95. Well, as long as it's not a Friday or right. a weekend. Then maybe exactly. not exactly. Well, now that they have the water park down at Kings Dominion, you know, oh, that's everybody, true. yeah. And there's also a water park over at the YMCA in Fredericksburg now. So oh. yeah, so lots of people like to go over there and hit that water park too. It's a little bit more local for people here. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so <clears throat> Amy, if you were going to a big concert, first of all, who would it be that you were going to see? That's a really good question. Um, I am a country girl at heart. Um, you know, totally grew up on all the good old country. So I don't know, like at this point, I mean, you can never have a bad time going to a Kenny Chesney concert. Um, Chris Stapleton, love him. Mm -hmm. Miranda Lambert um, went to see her a couple of years ago and she mm -hmm. was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I would say, I mean, I'm, I'm easygoing. I, I love anything country is, is good for me. Very good. Very good. And where would you go to probably catch a big concert like that? And like, how far is that from you in Fredericksburg? There's so many options here. So you can go to Jiffy Lube Live. Um, you're probably about an hour or so if you want to go kind of north and they have some really great concerts there. Um, you can actually now our Fredericksburg Nationals, we have a beautiful mm. stadium here in Fredericksburg um, and they have a whole concert series that they do throughout the summertime there. Um, and they've got some really good acts there. So if that's the case, then you're right here in town. It's right um, literally inside Central Park. Um, you can go down to Doswell. So down by King's Dominion, there's another great concert venue down there. Um, so, I mean, there's so many options around here. And then, of course, you can go into D.C. And there's just wonderful places there, both inside and outside, whether you want to go really big up to like Capital One Arena or whether you want to do something more like Meriwether um, Post Pavilion or something like that. So, I mean, if you like concerts like this is kind of your area, you can go anywhere. Very much so. OK, cool. How about you? Where are you going to what are you going to go look at? 
or go mm, listen to. That is so hard. Uh, I know I was trying to think of like, who would I want to go see? I mean, definitely a good country con um, concert would be terrific. I mean, I would love to see, I would love to see Shania Twain, uh, Celine love Dion. Her. I think that, that they both would yeah. be really, really good. I'm trying to think yeah. of who would be like a fun, like um, crazy good time. I don't know. Someone, someone from our youth. Um, like Don Jovi. <laughs> Exactly. That would be really fun. <laughs> Agreed. Really, really fun. Um, for where we'd go, we do have a really big stadium right in the city of Richmond. So it's like the big concerts come in. So I would say, you know, hey, that's, you know, 10, 15 minutes from everything in Richmond. Um, a lot of the big uh, ones would probably, probably more likely to go there. Maybe Charlottesville, which would be like an yeah. hour away. John Paul Jones. Um, That's where I went to see Miranda. That's a great venue. Okay. Okay. And then the one in Norfolk, definitely like the Scope um, or the Norva, that would be like, um, and that would be like an hour and a half or something like that, but you'd have to deal with the tunnel. So yeah, same thing. So Lots kind of, of have options. a lot of local, local options there for sure. Okay. How about if you want to go to the beach and you live in Fredericksburg, where would you go and how long would it take you to get there? Good question. Gosh, again, like as you're asking me these questions, I'm realizing just how many options there are mm -hmm. for everything in both of our areas. Yeah. Um, so we're we love duck, like outer banks, yeah, duck, definitely. like we go every single year, right? But how great to have it's like three and a half hours, maybe mm -hmm. four at the most, depending upon when you go in traffic and things like that. Um, so that's kind of one of our vacation destinations. Love Virginia Beach. That's an easy trip, you know, mm -hmm. two, two and a half hours, Virginia Beach. Um, great oceanfront boardwalk, you know, all that kind of stuff. We used to go there all the time when I was growing up. We had family there. Um, you can also go north. You can go Ocean City. Um, you know, you go go up to Delaware and go to Rehoboth. Um, you know, we also have places like Rick's on the river, Tim's on the river. Like if you want to go out kind of towards Westmoreland and have like a little beach type area in Colonial mm -hmm. Beach, if you don't want to quite go hit like the big beaches, you could easily do that. Um, but big beaches, I mean, goodness, the world's your oyster. You've got anywhere from like two and a half hours to four or five, depending upon whether you want to go north or south. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're even closer where you are, at least for the ones that are down south. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, Virginia Beach, for, you know, the easy Virginia Beach, we're at maybe, I would say about an hour and 45 minutes. And again, it's going to depend on traffic and all that yeah. stuff. Outer Banks is really easy for us too here in Richmond because we don't even have to net like you get on the interstate and do the old 95 to 64 down because we can do the back way down 460. And that really like is it's slower in some ways, but it's nice because you don't, you take the stress off, you know? Yep. Um, so it, it, it does make it really easy how close we are to the beach there. And again, same thing. Interesting that you said about going out to the river, you know, the river, as they the say, river. Your <laughs> river. Um, sure, we have the James River that flows all the way through that has a couple different spots there, but more beachy. If we went to go out um, towards the northern neck, we'd probably be a little bit further right. down going towards like Middle Peninsula, more like Lancaster, whereas you probably would be more like uh, Windmill Point and all that that's closer and Colonial yep. Beach yep. and stuff like that. Exactly. So, so it's good to know the options. It's so interesting you said about the North Beaches because I'd say definitely with where we are, Everyone is thinking more like going out west to the river or definitely going down, you know, yeah. south of Outer Banks and Virginia Beach. I wouldn't have even thought to go north. So, yeah. Ocean City is a big one around here. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. And let's see what, of course, the big one that everyone needs to know, mountains. If you needed to go Ooh. out to the mountains, about how long would it take you to get there from Fredericksburg and, and where would you go? Again, like not a bad drive. If you want to go to Shenandoah, if you're driving out mm -hmm. towards Culpeper, which from Spotsylvania, you know, you're driving out 25, 30 minutes, you can see the Blue Ridge. Like it's Definitely. so beautiful. Um, if you're going to Shenandoah and want to go to do some of the trails and things like that, I mean, you're anywhere from an hour and a half to two, two and a half hours, depending upon where you're going out there. Um, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful yes. drive. Or obviously if you go down towards Charlottesville and go down towards Appomattox in that direction, you're going to definitely see mountains there. Um, but for us, like the easiest way, if you're anywhere in the greater Fredericksburg region, you're hitting Shenandoah. That's, yeah. and it's Skyline Drive and all the beautiful scenery that you hear about. It's real. <laughs> it's really for there. Sure. For sure. Um, 
I would say that, yeah, same, um, you know, just going straight west. And and that is definitely Fredericksburg. I think about, you know, being in Spotsville and just driving town yes. three. And it's like you feel like you're already kind of there in the yeah. mountain. Absolutely. Um, it's not far. Like you hit Culpeper and there are parts of Culpeper that, I mean, the mountains are just right there. It's, it's yeah. gorgeous. Definitely. I'd say definitely a little closer than we are is where I feel like to get to the mountains for us, we definitely have to get on 64 and drive. I would say at least an hour where before we're even seeing anything getting more towards Charlottesville and all that. So mm -hmm. I think you guys would have a little bit more of a leg up on that for Fredericksburg. We'll give you that. Okay, so we're uh, plus one right now. That's right. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna have to make us up like with like little, you know. <laughs> not that we're competitive or anything. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. I'm better. We're closer to the peak. You're like, you're closer to the mountain. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Okay. All right. So when you look at things in... <laughs> What would you say in your MLS area that you cover, um, Amy, is your favorite place to visit? Oh, gosh, that's a hard one. I know. I was, you know, there are so many good places um, to go around here and they each kind of have like their own little um, like draw, right? So I love to go downtown Fredericksburg. Yeah. Um, city of Fredericksburg, I mean, it's just, you know, from growing up here to, from what it was then to what it is now, it has evolved. Um, it really has evolved with, you know, just, just the restaurants, the stores, the art, the festivals, you know, the farmer's market, just everything that they have there. Love, love, love that. Um, you can even go down to Caroline and Bowling Green is so super cute. It's like a little downtown Fredericksburg, like in mm -hmm. Bowling Green. Then you yeah. go out towards Culpeper and you've got like another main street area that has amazing restaurants, little shops. Um, there's just lots of places around here. And then, you know, we have amazing farmer's markets. Mm -hmm. um, we have them in Spotsylvania. Spotsylvania has an amazing one that they actually have at one of the commuter lots. Okay. Um and then, of course, like, you know, I also love to go to like Belvedere, you know, and go for the pumpkins yes. and yes. Um, Sneeds. And we have some amazing farms in Brayhead around here where you can go and and pick different things throughout the year and have, you know, the little marketplaces. So, I mean, all of the areas through here just have a lot of great things. But I do love downtown Fredericksburg. That's one of my favorites. For sure. And how about a second favorite? Place oh, would, I know you've said so many. I know that was lines. like second, third, and fourth right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I guess I would have to say, um, and I just haven't gone there that much. We've been so busy that we just don't get to, but I do love going into Culpeper. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've actually had my horse out there for a number of years and it's just That's a beautiful right. drive and, um, you know, there is a lot to do in that little main street area is, okay. is that downtown Fredericksburg, but a little bit smaller, a little bit less busy, still just as quaint and cute. So maybe we'll go with that. Okay. I like that for sure. For sure. Oh, let me think. So Ooh. you've been to Fredericksburg. So tell me like down where you are, what's kind of close to that where you are. Where it's, where it's similar sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, the little downtown. Well, definitely. I mean, we obviously have the, you know, the city of Richmond is right. a really cool place. And I would say that's definitely one of my favorites if I were to equate it. Uh, to, kind of like West Cherry Street or something in that area. Right, right. Something right. like that. Or even like there's different little spots, um, more like kind of Shaco Bottom, Shaco oh, yes. Slip which I'd equate more to that sort of thing that would have the cool little restaurants and shops and, and different things like that, that would, and, and like the cobblestone streets. Yeah. So it's yeah. Kind of very much like that. Yeah, uh, but Richmond, the city of Richmond does have a lot of really great um, spots, like all these different overlooks, like Hollywood cemetery that actually everyone had talked to me about that. And they like, it's always featured in books and movies. And I never had been there with all the time we've lived in Richmond. And I finally got to go last year and I'm like this place, you know, is just beautiful. And the way it looks over the river is just stunning. So I'd yeah. say that's definitely one of my favorites for I sure. Been there. I'll have to put that on my list. It's it's a great, <laughs> great spot for sure. Um, but yeah, downtown and then uh, Hollywood Cemetery would definitely be there. And then second spots. Oh, there are just so many. Hmm, this is so hard to pick. I to know. Pick one, to pick it one, is. to pick one. Um, it's a close second. I'd say Maymont downtown. Yeah, it's so pretty. 
Maymont with, you know, and all the memories with the kids being little, um, you know, going to the little petting zoo. And then for us, all the field trips with the kids, you know, going through. Um, and they now do this thing at, 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 at the holidays where they light everything all up, all the different gardens. And that's really fun to like go do that. That and I'd say like Lewis Ginter, um, the botanical gardens. Mm -hmm. Those two are kind of um, neck and neck for me in Richmond. So yeah. it's been a while yeah. since I've been there. I need to go to both of those. I think the last time we went to Maymont, it was about 10 years ago. So yep. we need to check it out. Definitely a time, definitely a time to check that out for sure. Okay. Um, Amy, what would you say is like the, your, your average price ranges in the Fredericksburg area for homes? So I looked at the greater Fredericksburg region and that is going to encompass the city of Fredericksburg, Spotsylvania, Stafford, Orange, Caroline, King George, Culpeper. Um, the average this year um, is about 446000 The average last year was 412000 So we're experiencing the price appreciation that, you know, everybody's been experiencing. But you can absolutely find homes for less than that. Um, we're kind of that great area where you can find that great starter home, the townhouse. Um, you, if you want acreage, we have a lot of properties on 10, 15, 20 plus acres. You have waterfront, you have golf course communities. I mean, there's a little bit of, of anything for everyone, depending upon what you're looking for. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you're looking for anything 200 and under, it's gotten very challenging in our area. Um, I'm sure it's like that for you guys too. Um, but, you know, anything we, we just keep looking, right? There's, there's always opportunities every now and again, you find one, you just got to run quick. Um, but I would say that average has, has snuck over that $400,000 range over the last couple of years. Absolutely. Um, interestingly enough, um, and I want to double check my numbers again, for sure. I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that our price point is running right more in the probably pretty close to yours because mm -hmm. I think we were averaging more in the mid threes before. Yep. Um, but I know that things have moved up particularly since, you know, 2020, I think. Absolutely. All of us and we were in that range before. in 2020. That was mm -hmm. absolutely our average. And, you know, the last two years have just, you know, this market has taken off, which everybody has seen. And um, so, again, you know, there's there's definitely the opportunities there, but you really have to be keyed in the market to be able to see them. And sometimes, you know, if you want to be right around Fredericksburg, because we're so close to 95 and all the community yes. thoroughfares and the VRE and all these amazing options for commuters. Um, sometimes you just have to be willing to go a little bit further away yes. from 95 and and you'll be able to find that better, you know, starter price point. Absolutely, for sure. And same thing in Richmond, just like Fredericksburg, right. there is something for everyone. Um, our price points in that very affordable price range is very tough, but you certainly can find things. Yeah. And um, same thing with having the lar larger acreage. Excuse me for a second. I have got an eyelash, I think, in my eye that just will not go away. That's it's making wishes. Me. Yes. <laughs> Making wishes. Oh my goodness. It is in there. Um, the, um, definitely I know with the Fredericksburg area and also with certain parts here of the Richmond area, would you say some of the larger properties are more prone for, um, equestrian properties? I know that's kind of your thing. You have that specialty for sure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely love that. I mean, honestly, we have seen such a big change since 2020 and exactly what people are looking for. We have a lot of people who want acreage. They want to be able to have a garden. They want to have a pool or put a pool in. They want to have a little bit of their own space. Um, so we've actually seen a huge uptick in the amount of acreage that people are looking for. Mm -hmm. um, you know, equestrian properties have, they fly. Um, it, it's, there's not a lot of them out there. Um, when they do go on the market, it is nothing for them to have multiple offers um, for them to sell very quick. Just because again, like, you know, a lot of people started, if they could have their horses at home, they did, you know, yes. they were maybe boarding before and now maybe they're not, or, um, you know, maybe they have somebody who wants to run a stall or two to help offset that cost. So um, the equestrian properties are, are just flying. It's, it's hard to find a little farmette or if you're looking for something that's, that's even even, you know, bigger, if you want that, you know, 10 plus acres, you know, you definitely need to, to be on it and have somebody who's really kind of in that market because they just don't last. Absolutely. That definitely makes sense for sure. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see that. So for Fredericksburg, for traffic and commuting, how would you say, 
Now this I know I've question. got a leg up on you on this one. <laughs> I was going to say, this is a trick question. This is the trick question. So where would you move if you love traffic jams at all times? <laughs> Anyways, no, seriously though, traffic, how are things in the Fredericksburg area and where would you say most people are commuting to and kind of what their average commute time would be? Golly, I don't even know if there's an average anymore. So, you know, we're bringing the hot lanes down. That has made a huge difference. Um, you know, now that people, I, I know that a lot of people in our area are not necessarily going back five days a week. Maybe they're going back mm -hmm. at the office two or three times a week. That makes sense. Um, yeah. And so that definitely has helped with some of it. But um, VRE is huge in our area. You know, you've got the Spotsylvania VRE, the Fredericksburg VRE, Leland VRE for Stafford. Mm -hmm. um, so anybody who is interested in taking those options is great um, yes. just because the tra it's going to minimize so much traffic for you. Um, obviously, we have the HOV lanes, the hot lanes. Um, and so, you know, on a good day, you take the hot lanes and you can be in D.C. from, you know, uh, Fredericksburg, Stafford in 45 minutes. Um, but that has to be a good day or, you know, <laughs> um, unfortunately there are different times throughout the day. There's a lot of commuters who go in first, first thing in the morning. Um, mm -hmm. there's, so it seems like that has gotten kind of, um, spread out, you know, as far as people trying to make their, the time better. Um, but there's also a lot of back ways. So, you know, you can go up through Maryland over the 301 bridge or that direction. So if you're in King George or Maryland, we have a lot of people who commute back and forth that way, or if they're going to Dahlgren or what have you, that's a great option. Um, if you're going out towards, you can take 29. So we have a lot of people who live in orange. They're going up towards, you know, DC or Gainesville or whatever. They can take 29 and go the back way and completely avoid, um, 95. You always have route one. Um, so there's lots and lots of options around here, but I don't think that there's really much of an average anymore. And then, of course, it depends on, you know, when you hit beach traffic. So beach traffic um, can definitely um, be a little bit challenging. So we all kind of plan our commutes around, you know, that season of the year. Absolutely, for sure. Well, I will definitely say, and I can I can say this because of growing up in Fredericksburg, so I know how things have changed. And originally, my parents moved us down to Fredericksburg uh, from Northern Virginia to get away from the rat race, and the rat race followed. Yes. So yes. Um, we are really fortunate in Richmond. That is one thing that I have loved, is that um, multiple ways to get around everywhere. Right. And for most people where they're commuting in the Richmond area, though some do make the commute up to D.C., most are staying fairly local. Mm -hmm. um, so that really does cut down on commute times for sure because of having the bigger city that has that big central for different employment. Um, Capital One's a big employer. Mm -hmm. Amazon's a big employer for us. And so most of those are all local. Um Definitely, we're pretty fortunate because there's so many different ways to get there that it's very rare that we see anything snarling up on uh, 64, 295 um, because of our 288 that you can outskirt everything, 895. Um, and that really just makes a big difference for sure. Now, I know the people that live in certain places, you know, getting more like Hanover and Ashland, they definitely have to deal with the, the 95 traffic for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And we also have a lot of people that we have um, a lot of families over the years where one spouse commutes north and one spouse commutes yes. south. You guys. Yes. So they kind of head towards that very southern Spotsylvania or Caroline County. Mm -hmm. And from Caroline County, they can, you know, both scoop both directions. And from Caroline, you can easily go the back way to the VRE and Spotsy now. So if you don't want to do the regular commute and you want to do the VRE, you can do that or obviously just jump on 95. Um, but yeah, you guys, and we have tons of back roads here too. You just have to kind of know about them. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, but I think that you guys have definitely some easy, more options, like yeah. in our area, you know, you just have a few of the major options. Right, right, right. Yeah. Stay <laughs> off of route three at certain times of the day or you'll yes. be real sorry. <laughs> yes, they are definitely trying to find lots of, of options. And, and as things have gotten, you know, they've moved a little bit further out route three, like yes. now you have three grocery store options down towards Harris and crossing. You don't have Which to go to Central nice. Park unless you want to, Which you know? Really nice. So there's yeah. definitely some things that they've been doing to try to make those types of things a little bit better and make the traffic a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, it was really nice. You know, once 2020, when all that started, we were like, wow, like you could get to DC in like no time at all. Exactly. Imagine <laughs> so that's right. Now it's starting to, to get a little bit busier again. Little, so little, we do little always take that 
yeah, we always take that into consideration for our, you know, buyers and sellers for yeah. sure. Like depending upon what do they want that commute time to look like. And then we talk about the various options and kind of plan from there for sure. Cause it is part of something you need to consider. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to definitely yeah. take that into consideration. Yeah. When you say the VRE, is that like your easy pass? Is that so the VRE is the train? Oh, yes, yes, yes. The yep. train. Yep. yep. So yep. the Virginia yep. Railroad yep. Express. Exactly. And so we have oh. people absolutely love it. And, and on our website, you could actually search for homes by the VRE stop that you that you ride from. So the nice thing is, is you have a couple different options and they've really expanded the parking options around them because the Fredericksburg VRE got a little bit difficult to park out there for a mm -hmm. while. Just One downtown. Every, yeah, everybody oh. was using like that, you know, area. Um, but now you've got the Spotsylvania VRE. It's got huge Oh, that's parking. nice. Yeah, super easy. It's like not even five minutes off of 95. It's so easy. Um, so if you're driving to it and you don't live right at that exit, super easy to get to. Um, you've got the downtown Fredericksburg and then you have a couple of options in Stafford as well. So if you go, then you can just hop on that VRE and, and off you go. So we have a lot of people who really love that option. That is good for sure. That is very, very good for sure. Um, and now that I think about it, there is the train there um, at Ashland and I know they've got some stuff downtown, but that's really good to hear that they've made a big difference. They have been talking about things in Richmond forever about, you know, setting up that it's like the little maps get released and it looks like um, it looks like uh, almost like the metro system with all the different. I hope they do it. We it would be great. Right. And it yeah. would connect us to so many different people for sure. Yeah, it just makes sure. things easier. And then they also have all the commuter lots too. So like you can yes. plug in like years and years and years ago before I went into real estate, I went to, I was up in DC and we used to do slugs. Um so one of the guys that I worked with, he and I would meet in the morning, we'd go drop by the slug line and pick up somebody who was going up to our area so we could ride on the HOV lanes. So, you know, there's still lots of van pools, slug line, mm -hmm. all sorts of other options too to make your commuting because the eight the hov lanes really you really do just shoot up and back yeah. um it's really the main lines that you know of course obviously they can have trouble too but it's really the main lines that are so much slower so if you can find a way to get yourself on hov then you know your commute is a lot easier it just can be expensive too so definitely definitely amy what would you say are kind of like average um property taxes for just average for kind of the areas most of the areas that you sell predominantly yeah so I, it's funny because I was looking into that again the other day just to kind of update myself on what like the most recent ones and the counties in our area kind of use a percentage. Yeah, so thanks. Spotsylvania County, you know, is about 55% of property value. Whereas mm -hmm. if you go a little bit further north, Stafford County is about 73%. Um, and then the city of Fredericksburg is about 83 cents per hundred dollar assessed value um so you know they all kind of vary a little bit mm -hmm. and obviously mm -hmm. the further north you go you know the more expensive it's gonna it's gonna be because you're you're paying to be a little bit closer <laughs> absolutely well that is very interesting because then i would say likely it depends on assessment there um our property taxes are definitely higher in in the richmond area because okay. And I've noticed as, and I'm sure you've noticed this too, like over the years when things are very strong, mm -hmm. um, that you'll notice that as assessments keep on going up, um, all of a sudden the county start adjusting the rates just like by a couple little cents and all of a sudden it's like, oh, see, we're helping you out. And it's like, mm, not really. Yeah. Um, but and then they got to hold tight for a while. It, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would say our, for our counties definitely are going to be much more affordable than how they are for. Uh, the city, but I know, um, I think Chesterfield County, they were at 97 cents. So actually higher. That yeah. is really interesting. Wow. And they just recently dropped down a little bit. I think they're more at like 92. So they did adjust a little bit. Um, and then Henrico is, I think it was 87. I think they dropped it down to 85. So that oh, is really I interesting. Down, I never knew interesting that they were going down versus, versus up, you know? Well, just the assessments keep on going up. Right. Because every right, time right, I go right. in, it's like everyone's like, I have so to correct it. Rate. Right. My, my payment's fixed because of an interest rate. Well, your assessment's going to keep on going up. So yeah. be careful. Yeah. Um, 
city of Richmond, I would say we're more like in the um, probably closer into the rates for the DC area sort of thing, like a wow. you know a dollar twenty two or something. Oh, wow. Like that, okay. So. But I mean, it also makes sense. Like you know, like you said, you're almost paying for some convenience, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, some of those, all the different transportation, and you know, all the different walkability options and things like that. You know, really, we don't have as many, nearly as many walkability options. You know, right. you're looking at like literally downtown Fredericksburg or some of these little tiny towns. Otherwise, you know, you're in a car. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. For sure. It is interesting how that kind of like works out. All right. All right, Amy. So do we win again? That's two for us. Yes. 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 <laughs> Somebody needs to be keeping score. Like, you know, not that I play tennis, but it's like love or something like that. You know, so. Anyways. Okay. Or we'll have little ponies. We'll have little ponies. Like, you know, jockey. Okay. That's my ponies. language. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> We'll do the horses. We will honor. We will honor Amy's love. All right. So, Amy, grab your phone, and okay. we're gonna do a little. We're gonna do a little like exercise here. Okay. I want you to go on to your MLS and find like your favorite property that's around kind of the five hundred thousand price range. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay. Well, um, we pull new listings every morning just so we can keep an eye on the market and what's happening. So I'm going to actually um, tell you about one of the um, properties that we just put on before this weekend. Um, mm -hmm. And it's the reason why I'm going to tell you about it is because it is that kind of perfect example of that 500 ish thousand dollar price point. Um, so it's at 524.9. Um, and this property is over in Lee's Park in Spotsylvania, which is. Okay literally five minutes to 95, all of Cosner's Corners, Spotsylvania Regional, the VRE, like you want to talk about m super convenient. Like it's mm -hmm. amazing. Plus it also has great sidewalks. It has a big pool. It has really good, you know, HOA options. Um, but this particular property actually was um, built in 2019. So it's okay. still very new. It has like all the design center options that you would want. Um, mm -hmm. you know, if you were, uh, headed to kind of build something yourself and they even had put on like this huge, like $44,000 enclosed rear porch, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you guys down there, but ever since we've had the pandemic, the outdoor mm -hmm. living spaces have been very important. Yes incredibly important. So yes. the fact that we have this huge rear um, enclosed porch, there's a patio area, it's a fenced backyard, like all that kind of stuff, um, you know, has just been super helpful. So I would say that one's at 9122 Wood Creek Circle. And it's just a great example of, you know, what you're going to find right about that price point. For sure. For sure. Okay. That's, that's a good thing. So it is a toss up for me. We do have um, a really great listing that I think is a really good representation that put on and it is in uh, Brander Mill. So right by the Swift Creek Reservoir down in Midlothian, the Midlothian part of Chesterfield. And this is definitely an older property and that one's listed at five, we're at 525. Um, okay, and so about, about the same price point. Same, same price point. Yep. Mine is definitely an older one. Um, uh, it was built in the, oh my gosh, we were built like in the 70s, 80s sort of thing, uh, but does have a basement, which is kind of unusual. That's definitely okay. more prevalent up in Fredericksburg, yep. Yep. but we actually have a basement here, which was a big selling point, but definitely backs up to nature preserve, lots of outdoor space um, and this beautiful like greenhouse area on it too. So there's amazing, amazing light, big giant, uh, renovated kitchen, um, and all the bathrooms are renovated too. Just lots of square footage. And like I said, that's right at 525. And you're in a community that has everything. The pools, the reservoir for kayaking and sailing. Um, lots of trails. Very, very active. A big community that everyone has loved over the years. Oh. But I must admit, a favorite one that is on the market right now is in a neighborhood called uh, Westover Hills, which is technically... The city of Richmond, but it's like south of the James, like you go right over across from like Bird Park and Maymont. This and, and it's the magic of technology when everybody sees this on this finished video is going to see how beautiful this house is. This house is like the quintessential fairy fairy tale storybook house. Um, and it's right at like 529. And I love this house. I love the neighborhood. It's just like I could spend 
days. I look for every excuse to be over there with my bars. Like, oh, they're looking for this. Oh, hey, I know where to like you sort of things. <laughs> let's go this direction. Let's go this direction. You're going to love it. All right, Amy, let's do it again and go into your MLS on your phone and find the highest priced home in the market where you sell. Okay. Well, so in our area, um, that usually means that you're either waterfront, like on the Potomac or um, potentially downtown Fredericksburg. Let me see. There is a really beautiful one that is in downtown Fredericksburg, which I think is probably going to be the one. So let's see here. Yep. Okay. So it is on Amelia Street. So 307 Amelia Street. And anybody who goes to downtown Fredericksburg knows this house because yeah. like you just know the house. Like it is, it is unbelievable. It is actually on the market for 3,695,000. It was built in 1834. Oh. Um, I know it has almost 7,000 square feet. So it's gigantic, has the elevator, like just all sorts of incredible things. But when you go walk by it from the front, it's that like quintessential Fredericksburg colonial with the big, gigantic, beautiful mm -hmm. white columns. Like it's so stately and just elegant and it's kind of just a fixture downtown. And so that one's on the market at 3,695,000. Yeah. So it wins. <laughs> it wins. It, it wins. It wins. <laughs> There is a house that is on uh, the market right now in Windsor Farm, and it is at 4.2 million. Um, wow. You'll get to see this in production, but just this stately, beautiful, um, I definitely, you've got the river in the back for sure. And it's got the big uh, driveway in front and then like the several different tiers, like you're waiting for everyone to be waiting out front, like Downton Abbey to let you in. That wow. sort of thing. Like, That's so. amazing. Yes, you know, just, you know, something quaint. Those properties are always so fun they to are. look at. And and it's amazing how many different options there are. You know, we just yes. sold one in downtown Fredericksburg at 1.375 million. That was actually a brownstone, which Ooh. you normally would have been able, you wouldn't have been able to find a property like that down there. And so there's so many new things that are happening downtown um, that are just incredible. And it was a four level, just gorgeous, new. It's only about three years, three or four years old, had special parking. So you didn't have to worry about the parking situation, but the rooftop was incredible. And you just look out over like all of downtown Fredericksburg and there's church steeples all kind of right nearby. And so there's just so many, it's so fun to go in and look at those types of properties. There's lots of oh, options, yeah. especially in that price point. We never used to have that many options. And now, you know, whether you want to be downtown and have that kind of living or whether you want to be more like in a fun lake where you have a gated community with, you know, the water and the clubhouse and all that kind of stuff, or you just want more of a private water retreat or acreage. I mean, if you want, some of these horse farms are just incredible. Um, and, you know, also kind of go into that price point as well, depending upon the facilities. But yeah, it's, it's amazing how much more that price point has become prevalent, I think, probably in both of our areas yes. over the last number of years than it ever was before. And I think it's also good that even though and people might be like, you know, oh, does that work for us one way or another? Of course, prices are going up. Everything's going up. But it does. And more people, I mean, the pandemic, for one, you are you you hit the nail on the head about so many people are still working remotely. And I feel like that is definitely both of our areas. Um, the majority of people are still working remotely or are in some sort of flex plan that makes a big difference. And where the homes and the space and where that space needs to be um, allocated has changed so much for people. Um, I do feel like a lot of people here in Richmond, they're definitely, rather than sizing down, they are sizing up because at least one or two of the people are working from home now for sure. Um, that has made a big difference on stuff there. And then having that option to have either an older, you know, renovated colossal home that has all these different things, or also having, you know, where you want to have the land maybe in Hanover and Powderton or in Goochland that they want to push out a little bit more. That is amazing. And I think it's so cool. I love it where this particular house is for uh, Richmond, because I was automatically thinking it would be in certain parts of 
uh, downtown or it was going to be out in Goochland. I was really, that's exciting to see that it was somewhere in one of the, I mean, it's, it's the timeless uh, place to be in, in Henrico County for sure in the West End sort of thing. Uh -huh. uh, but I think that's really great that it's opening up. And a lot of that has to speak for both of our areas mm -hmm. have a lot more employment opportunities, particularly with people going remote that they don't necessarily have to be living in these super, super expensive areas that have, well, we joke about the Fredericksburg traffic, but let's be real compared to some places it's, it's nothing. That yeah, they can enjoy especially, and, yeah. yeah, especially if you don't have to commute all the time or go places all the time. You know, if you're working from home, you know, and you have so many options of great things to do nearby. And I think that's part of it, too, is we're able to start competing with some of these areas that, yeah. you know, the food scene in Fredericksburg is incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, the chefs that have been, um, you know, coming to our area and the types of restaurants that have been opening up and the entertainment venues and the family friendly activities and the art scene. Um, yeah. You know, there was an article, it's been a couple years ago now, and it's gotten even better since then, calling Fredericksburg the Little Brooklyn. Um, so, I mean, there's just a lot of, there's culture there that that's happening as far as these opportunities. And so I think that, you know, some people now, if they don't have to be in the city five days a week uh, and are able to commute some or telecommute or what have you, you know, they're looking at some of these other options. You know, they can get more for their money coming yes. to our area or your area, mm -hmm. you know, and then kind of find out the best way to get back to work or, you yes. know, I've got some clients actually, it's been amazing how many people that have been coming to Fredericksburg from New York and they can take the train up and they're going up once a month, once a quarter or what have you. Um, so it's just, it's amazing, you know, some of those things, but I think the areas, both Richmond and Fredericksburg have done a great job of bringing things that now people who maybe previously lived in the city and loved those types of amenities mm -hmm. now have them in our cities. Absolutely. And I'd say for the Richmond area, we have definitely seen, I think they recently, um, there was an article that was run about actually Richmond being one of the fastest appreciating areas and the people coming in from big cities in droves because of how far their money can go and just a nicer, um, calmer lifestyle, but still having lots of employment options and definitely great housing options as well. So it's like, I feel like we have Everyone I'm talking to, it's like um, Chicago, Dest Detroit, Charlotte, Atlanta, you know, some big ones that we're having uh, come in, which has been really exciting for us. And we need some flavor here. So yes. that makes a big difference for sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, Amy, thank you so much for joining us and for um, playing along today and sharing about great Fredericksburg and... Um, I just couldn't couldn't thank you enough for being there. And I love the partnership that we have and all of that. Oh, me too. Well, thank you so much. And I've actually learned um, some more information about your area that I didn't know, which will help me whenever I'm talking to our people that are headed your direction. So this was great information for, for me to learn. And it seems like, you know, it's such a comp, there's such complimentary areas. Yes. You know, there really, really are. So um, thank you again for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining us again for another episode of Living in Richmond. And remember, leave everything better. Once again, if this is your first time to our channel and you wanna learn everything there is to know about living in Richmond, Virginia, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that cute little bell so you're notified every time we release a new video.